Well, hello class. Welcome to module four of iTech 6372, online course design, delivery, implementation, and evaluation. By the end of this module, you should be able to define authentic learning and problem-based learning and tell the difference between those two concepts, identify three basic components of online teaching, explore active learning opportunities for your students, apply student engagement techniques successfully in online learning, and also discuss authentic learning experiences and student engagement techniques that can be used in online learning environments. These last three goals or outcomes for this module are going to be really important as we progress through the rest of this course and for your final capstone project to designing your own online learning module. Two of the terms we're going to define and look at really deeply during this module are authentic learning and problem-based learning. Authentic learning refers to the genuineness of the learning environment and incorporates things like real life problems, genuine situations, and realistic opportunities. Many times, authentic learning is problem-based learning, where students are asked to solve a problem in an authentic way. This allows students to have a voice and a little bit of choice in their learning opportunities, as well as in the products and the outcomes that they're producing from it. So it really can be a good source of motivation for our students. A lot of times you can provide some authentic learning through community projects, that are used to evaluate ideas. Authentic learning is going to be cross-disciplinary, so you may see some, some crossover between different topics. There may be questions about math and science, for example, incorporated within a literacy project. These types of learning situations require students to use analysis, synthesis, and evaluation level questioning techniques. And that works both for the teacher and for the students. You may be familiar with the term project-based learning which is not quite the same as problem-based learning, although they are both methods of inquiry-based learning. Problem-based learning does promote the construction of new knowledge, but it occurs in many forms. It's easy to think that it has to be a project, but it doesn't always take the form of a project. It is a structure for discovery, so students are encouraged to investigate their own topics or individual interests, and it appeals to their instincts of, that some students have to investigate and create learn, and learn more. This lends really well into something that's called lateral reading for research. Lateral reading is when you have a topic of interest to read about, but instead of reading with one linear focus, you really so you end up finding another topic that's similar to your original focus. Think of it like researching through Wikipedia. Now I know that Wikipedia has kind of a bad name when we talk about using it as a reference with our students, but it really can serve as a great starting point for research. It also gives our students a really good place to start, especially when they don't come into a situation or are learning about a topic that they have very little background knowledge about. It's also really good for providing opportunities for lateral reading. So let's say I'm researching about information about bands in the 60s, and I find quite a bit of information on Wikipedia about the background and how the music is developing in that time. But then it begins to mention specific bands that I've become interested in. It leads me to additional articles about bands that were formed in the UK in the 1960s. As I read into that information, it leads me to information about the Beatles. And I found out that they're a band from the 1960s that was formed in the UK. And then I begin to focus a little bit more in a more narrow way on one band. I didn't leave the topic of music in the 1960s, but I was able to read laterally across the topic and then narrow my focus of study a little bit more. Again, problem-based learning is not always a project, but it does provide a method for learning for students to internalize their knowledge and skills and also allows for that transfer of knowledge among topics. Letter reading is a great way to introduce problem-based learning. There are really three main online teaching components, presentation, activities, and assessment and feedback. These are presented in a continuous loop. Some activities that you'll see here are mentioned in our book under six specific activity types for learning that be performed online. However, on the chart that it mentions in section 6.1, starting on page 94, it actually lists more than six. And just like some of the things that are on the word wall here, there are activities that you can use with your students in an online learning environment to encourage interaction and allow them to produce work, that, work that's not just consistently being a discussion board poster, always having an essay as the end product. You still want to make sure that you accommodate student learning styles and interests and include a variety of assessments. You also make sure that you include formative assessment. 
as you're going along so you can help to monitor the progress and help to continue to meet your students' needs, as well as as you assess your coursework. These learning activities can also help provide you with feedback from your students so you know whether you need to spend more time on a particular learning module. You may need to pull some students into a small group, or this is also a good way for you to evaluate to what degree is your teaching being successful online. It can also give you an idea about what you might need to change based on student feedback. This will be sort of like the grading that you're going to get from each project in this class. For module four, you'll have another discussion post reflection. And I wanted to offer a couple new sentence frames to, to employ. In a classroom, you want to have a discussion among students and ask questions. And if it was face to face, then you would also want to ask further probing questions. Within an online discussion, you may need to help your students and give them some sentence frames to help to structure that. For example, at first I thought blank, but now I think blank. Or I like how the author uses blank to show or because of blank. Or this relates to blank because of blank. Or I agree that, but we also have to consider blank. Again, these sentences are designed to help students facilitate their learning and also express what they've learned through this module. You also want to make sure and give your students an opportunity to, to disagree and provide sentence structures to help them formulate their thoughts in a productive manner. You know, we want to make sure that even when we disagree that it's done in a civil fashion. I hope everyone will have a wonderful week and I look forward to interacting on the discussion board to discuss these important concepts.